I suppose I should start by thanking you for doing another mindless chick look. This is your choice. My choice is next week. How dare you? I'm not saying it's your choice. I'm saying for allowing me. Agreeing to be the good sport and do one. Exactly. So testy. But because you've allowed me to do such a selfless thing, um, I thought that we should test you in front of people to make you embarrassed. What do we think? Yeah? Hmm? No, but sure. Well, okay. So as you guys know, the movie that we did this week, if you're following us on Twitter... Is Perfect Date. It's a Netflix movie. The Perfect Date. I am so sorry. Um, But it's a Netflix movie, and it's honestly your run-of-the-mill chick flick. Yeah, it's basically the bare bones of every chick flick that has ever been made. Anyways, you're really making people really want to listen to this episode. You're really making them really interested. But anyway, one of the parts of this movie is that the um, high school students create an app. And so I was curious to see what apps are out there created by high school students because obviously, I mean, they know a lot about tech. Obviously, it's happened. Um, and they have. So I have eight apps oh, created by high school students. And some of them, the names will probably give it mostly away and some of them it won't. And you need to tell me what you think the app is for. Okay. Okay? Deal. All right. So the first one is called Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Selfies? Selfies? Yeah. Like, what, what do you think it would do? I have no idea. No, I'm just curious. What do you What do you think it would do? Like different filters, or I don't have any idea. <laughs> so Snapchat, basically. basically. <laughs> uh, no. So it says North Philadelphia high school students designed this crime stopping app, which allows onlookers to report crimes where yeah. and when they take place. Well, that is clever. Yes. Uh, this one is called I Parked Here. It's to remember where you parked your car. I mean, essentially. So it's created to help drivers find their parked cars and keep track of time left on the meter. That's also decidedly helpful. Yeah. There was a story about a guy who lost his car in, I think it was Germany, and they found it 35 years later. I mean, I've lost my car before, but that is extreme. (laughs) Um, This one is called Echo. Echo adds an echo to your voice? I don't know. (laughs) Um, so this helps students connect with their teachers. The Echo app allows teachers to send homework and study reminders to students with lower than average GPAs. Okay. Kind of cool. Um, this one is called Eye Tigers. Eye Tigers. No idea. So this is similar to the other one. It's a student-designed app which provides students with access to homework assignments, campus news, sports information, fine arts, faculty, clubs, and organizations. All right. And the last one is called, you know what, I'm going to split it up on you because I don't like this one. Um, another app is called Trext. T-R-E-X-T. Trext? Mm-hmm. T-R-E-X-T. I have no idea. Hiking? <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I get where you're Maybe. going with that. But no, this app informs parents of their children's whereabouts. Oh. Yeah, and the fact that it came from a student, good for them. That's helpful, but also terrifying. Why? Because now the government can track people. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Conspiracy theory. Not that they already don't, but... Anyway, so I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, obviously high school students are extremely smart and can do pretty much anything that a grown-ass adult can do, but I always think it's interesting to see what people have accomplished at such a young age. It's just... All right. So, on to the movie, The Perfect Date. Yeah, so I'm Shay. I'm Tyler. This is Cinematically Correct, and yes, it was my choice, but it was a audience recommend. Nomcast recommended it to us, and the reason that they recommended it to us is because I, a while back, we were talking about the typical um, heartthrob, male heartthrob, of the 80s and we were like I don't know who would be considered that in 2020 and this Noah Centino I guess that's how you say his name yeah um, Centineo or something cent- yeah um the main character in this movie um was supposedly the heartthrob of 2020 so we wanted to know who he was and what he did so here we are yeah yeah so do you want to start with your beer uh, I suppose I can start with the beer this is Havoc Mead which you've done a different one by them Uh, This is Hop Swarm Dry Hopped Mead, and we picked it because there's a B on the can, and 
beekeeping is apparently how he fleeces the dean of admissions at Yale into wanting him to apply. Personally. Basically, yeah. We also picked it because Tyler has had a run of really great beers, and he's likely to dislike this one very much, and we thought we needed some, you know... Some chaotic evil in the world? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not great, but it's not... It's not rip my face off bad like the tomato beer that you got. Gotta try harder. We've gotta try harder. I mean, that tomato beer was still by far the worst beer that I've ever had. I, re- I really kind of set myself up for like a... Wait, what about the pickle beer? That one is also terrible. Mm-hmm. So both of them are basically... So equal. those are the beers to beat? Okay. No. All right. Understood. Understood. Okay, so do you want to give everyone a brief synopsis? It should be like a five-second thing. <laughs> brief synopsis. Brief synopsis. Very brief. A uh, high school student from a poor area of Connecticut, which is an oxymoron, <laughs> uh, wants to go to Yale. So he has his friend develop an app to be basically an escort or hooker without the sex uh, for rich, entitled high school women in Connecticut. And he falls for one of them. And that's the movie. Okay. Sh- sure. I think some people would have seen it differently but okay um so let me open up imdb so we can go through the characters admittedly we didn't know most of them um i don't know if i know any of them except for the father isn't it sad that we're at the age now where we know the parents (laughs) no he's just he's the most prolific actor of them he had the by far and away the largest imdb anyway Okay, so Noah Centineo, Centineo, I don't know how to say his Cent- name. Centineo? Centennial? I don't know. So what if you guys want to let us know how to say it, you know, go ahead. Um, decidedly, I doubt anybody who ha- listens has watched this movie, but anyway. Um, he plays Brooks Radigan, um, and basically he's a regular high school student who has this dream of going to Yale and wants to be rich for the mere fact of being rich. And he, the whole movie is like him trying to attain that goal and not really caring what he has to do to get there. Right. Um, he, he is like a, he's not an unlikable character. He's not a jock or like a, you know, like that. He's typical, also not a likable character. That's what I was going to say. So he's not also not, a, he's like in between. And as the movie goes on, you start to like him more, but it's complicated. So, but he's not your typical what you would think of as like the high school douchebag or anything like that. Like that's no. not the stereotype. He's he's and he's also not the typical high school nerd or any of the stereotypes you think of. He's kind of like an in between. If he was a breakfast cereal, he'd be shredded wheat without any sugar. <laughs> like just boring and plain and just. So he's you. <laughs> just there's no defining quality there other than I I don't know his work ethic because he does work hard. Yeah, I mean, but as the movie goes on, it does get a little bit better. But anyway, um, Laura Morano plays Celia Lieberman. Now, I had, I thought I had never seen her before. However, she did play um, young characters in some of the shows that I've watched. Um, but she was also in Lady Bird, which is a very big movie. We have yet to see it yet, but it was very big. So yeah. she may be actually more well-known than we realize. And I enjoyed her. I know she is also really famous for a Disney Channel show, I don't know the show. It's yeah, was obviously beyond my time. Um, but I liked her. I, you know, I we've talked about again and again the angsty teen character because it keeps popping up in our movies. Um, and so it seems like the, the female character that's supposed to be likable is always the angsty teen lately. that In the movies we've been watching, and that's what I mean by lately, not lately as in car Yeah, movies. but she was by far and away... The best version of those that we've she seen was. recently. That's what I was getting at. She's definitely the best version that we've seen recently in, in the movies we've covered. Um, there were parts of her that, you know, were not likable. Like, right. I mean, her, at the beginning, she was kind of like stomping around with her parents. When you see later on, her parents are obviously very wonderful people. Yeah. So, at first you think like, oh, she's just rebelling against like the rich parents that are awful and horrible. But they're clearly not. They're clearly very good people. 
So they care about her. They they're invested in her day to day. The group like hug. Yeah. You know. So I mean. So there were parts, but I think it was almost like you were supposed to at first kind of be like, ugh, I don't want her, you know, but it was hard to do because she's, she's likable. She's yeah. just, she is. Entirely so, fair. Anyway, so if you haven't guessed, because she's the second one I mentioned, she is the person that he ends up with after the whole, like, long, like, oh, will they, won't they, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's a chick like that. They're, per- they're perfect together. They just don't realize it. And then, oh, they realize it at the end of the movie. Yeah. I mean, it's a chick flick. Yeah. I mean, what are you expecting? So there's that. Um, there's a few other people. Um, I'm gonna butcher this name, so please don't come for me. But o- Odysseus, o- o- Odysseus, Georgia Dis. I don't know how to say it. I don't. But he plays Murph. Yeah, I would say Odysseus, Georgia Dis. Yeah. Now I've never seen him in anything else, but great actor. Nothing. I mean, there's no, there's not really anything remarkable about the acting in this movie for anyone. Like, that's not a, that's no. not what this movie is about. No, absolutely not. Um, you did say you knew. Oh, but I did want to mention before I move on too far. Laura Morano is my connection. Of course. Well, I had to. So, as I said earlier, when I was talking about her, she plays a younger character in some of the shows that I've watched. Well, one of those shows was Heroes, and I'm sure you already know by now, but. Heroes had Milo Ventigma, which was Jess, which was Rory's boyfriend in Gilmore Girls. You're welcome. And it wasn't a ping pong. When is this going to end? Hey, it wasn't a ping pong, so nobody can come for me. You can stop at any time. Oh, please, because you are ready to go with yours. So. Yeah, I will be happy to stop as soon as you decide to get off this high horse of yours. Well, now that we know that yours is next, I am positive that yours is the father. No, it's it's actually not. (laughs) It's not. How dare you? Wow. Oh, I figured that's because you saw his IMDb, that. No, I looked at his as the first one uh, because I figured that he would be the link just because... Because he has the longest... IMDb, but no. So mine is Wayne uh, Pierre, and he's the dean. Okay. And he was in 12 Years a Slave with Benedict Cumberbatch. I love Benedict Cumberbatch. Who voices Smog from The Hobbit, which is Lord of the Rings... I'll take that one because it, it, it involves Benedict Cumberbatch and I love him. I also do think I need to see 12 Years a Slave at some point in my life. I have just not gotten to it. Oh, um, it, was, it was wonderful. It's, it's, not a, it's not a light movie, but it's I know. And right now we're in light movie phase, but as you know, it will change. So anyway, um, did you want to talk about the father at all? Because you did say you knew him. I mean, he's just, he's the just normal guy. He just wants to go about his life and... He has his priorities where they should be, where he doesn't care about making the money or being the, the huge success. He cares about being a good father. Yeah, and I mean, and it like, looks like he was a writer and also a professor. Writer, professor at UConn, and like he's just... he The intellectual type. He settled down because that's what his son needed. He didn't need to be on the book circuit with him because the mom left and... Which is a good just dad. Traveling all across the country, having or having no friends because you're never in the same place for a week at a time. Right. And at the beginning of the movie, the main character, um, Brooks, um, kind of talks da- down to about his dad of, yeah. about that, saying something to the effect of he was successful once, and then he stopped being successful. And that's not really true because I mean, how do you define success? He would, I would assume, his father would define his success as being a good dad. So yeah. he's absolutely successful. Well, it's just he doesn't understand what changed and what changes he had to take care of his family. Right. Like he's not to that point in his life where he can conceptualize that for himself. Like right. Okay. So were we ready to talk about it? Um, I'll let you know, guys. This is going to be a short one, so you can stick with us for this because it's going to be short. Yeah, that's hopefully. why we do some. Fluffy we say that ones. every time, and it's a, an hour podcast. That's fair, but we 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 put in some fluff to try to give you guys a break. But anyways, so we already talked about the heartthrob of twenty twenty aspect of it, so you know we can move on from that. Um, so one of the big parts of the um, movie, which we mentioned at the beginning, was the app, right? Mm-hmm. So the app that was created in this movie was right after Brooks had been paid to take out. Um, Celia. Celia. And she knew about it. She was cool with it. It was all weird. And we thought it was going to be like a 10 things I hate about you situation where like he got paid and then he fell in love with her and then she found out later and the whole thing. But no, she knew about it and she seemed fine with it. It was weird. 
But then he decided, this is such a great idea that I'm going to make an app about it so women can pay me to not only take them on dates, but to be whoever they want. So I'll be a cowboy. I'll be a, I don't know, salsa dancer. I'll be whatever. The perfect listener. Yeah. He, There's yeah. Only, that's the only way you can see it. Or I totally agree. <laughs> Basically. So basically, a woman could choose his personality and his look, and he would be whatever they wanted. So it begs the question, first of all, the assumption would be that he's in high school, so he's not of age. He's not 18. Um, I mean, if he was a senior, he could be, because I was 18. He he could be, or he could not be. So start of my senior year. We don't know. Um, but what is the morality of having an app where you pay for somebody to take you on a date? Now, there is obviously no... The, the morality for being an escort. A non-sexual escort, yes. Okay. I mean, I don't think it, there's good or bad to it, really. I mean, it's kind of... A... Oh, so I can be an escort? I'm not going to have sex with anybody, but I can create an app and I can be an escort and you're cool with it. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Well, y- the whole problem there is that it's... I mean, it, in this movie, there's no right or wrong to it because it's just there's no the women know that he's not going to have feelings for them and he's up front about i'm going to do whatever you tell me to do Mm -hmm. and it's more about the appearance like going out with him is this the socially acceptable thing Mm -hmm. rather than going to a dance with your cousin or any of the other things that you see in the 80s and 90s so you're saying it's okay i i don't have a problem with it i mean but it's Definitely creepy. So you're saying that having a sugar daddy is okay? Well, provided that you're not doing anything illegal. Sign me up. I'm in. Thank you. I, Great. I So here's the way I look at it. So I am only a little bit hesitant on the morality because of the aspect of not knowing who you're talking to online. So while he knows who he is, he doesn't know who's on the other end of that app. And no matter what safeguard you put in place, no matter anything you do... There's no way to know who is requesting that date. And he is a guy, so I mean, hopefully that would mean that he is a little bit safer than if it was a female. Well, yeah, if it was definitely a girl, you could 100% be abducted. Well, right. So, I mean, there is that. But, I mean, it doesn't mean that nothing bad could ever happen to a guy. So, like... He could also be abducted. There could be a a 6'6", 300-pound psycho on the other line. Right. On the other end. So, this movie could have gotten real dark. Like, I mean, he got lucky with the people he met, but this movie could have gotten real dark. So I guess all I'm saying is if you guys like get inspired by a movie like this, remember real world implications because that was like Disney movie style. Um, There are real creeps on the internet. And I don't think if my kid came to me and told me they were doing that, I don't think I would allow it. I would be like, no, No. you're not. I can't. No. Well, that's where uh, Trexting comes in. Yeah, yeah, where you know where your kids are. At all times. Basically, yeah. So anyway, I mean, not a big deal, but it was a little weird, and I kept thinking, ooh. Yeah, that's kind of just a weird... I did want to talk briefly about... It was a little bit refreshing that they didn't even bother with any of the tropes of trying to make her the nerdy girl that is unattractive. Yeah, you said that when she came down. You were like, oh, she's just like the paint in the overalls thing. I'm like, no, that girl's pretty yeah. with nothing. Well, she's gorgeous. Well, so all of those old movies, it's you're wearing overalls with paint on them, you're wearing glasses, you're wearing your hair tied up behind your, like it, you're wearing a baggy clothes, and everyone already knows that she's gorgeous because, she, like, that's what right, movies are. because she's are. gorgeous like, and glasses don't hide that. Yeah. There's, it's just stop it already, Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. It's painful. Yeah, they didn't do most tropes. Like, even the douche that was in this movie, there is there was a typical douche. He was, from what I could see, he wasn't like a football player. I mean, normally in these movies, they're a jock or they're whatever. I, he didn't have anything to him other than that he was a douche and he had a fancy car. I didn't see any of well, the Well, he other... has a fancy car because his home life is horrible. Because his parents are getting divorced and her mom is sleeping with, or his mom is sleeping with a BMW. Well, right. But I'm just saying there was no trope there. There whatever. was no, you usually get the jock, popular kid, whatever. Yeah. We didn't get any of that. We don't even know if he was popular. We know nothing. We know he had one friend. Like, there, there he, were no tropes in this movie, really. Like, it was kind of a planned, well, so fewer the, tropes. The token minority slash LGBTQ was in this movie. 
which okay. I guess is a very big trope right now. And people were a little upset that it wasn't purposeful. Like, the person didn't need to be gay. I mean, I can understand that, but at the same time, people are people. So what does it matter either way? Exactly, and that's how I feel. So if you guys haven't seen the movie, um, Brooke's best friend, Murph, I believe his name is. Yes. Which, weirdly, there was a kid in my high school that was called Murph, and he was like a big class clown, and I kept thinking of him every time I watched this. But, um... Murph was gay. And no, there wasn't really a reason or care for that. And the only thing that bothered me about that storyline is at one point, Murph gets mad at Brooks for decidedly good reason because he bails on him to continue his goal of being with rich people and whatever. And Brooks or Murph decides to switch shifts because he doesn't want to deal with an egocentric asshole anymore. Yeah. But... Murph is in love with a guy who keeps ordering a tuna melt. This guy keeps coming in and he's in love with him, whatever. But the guy continues to come in after Murph switches shift. And I was very confused because I'm like, well, then how did Tuna Melt Man know that Murph switches sh- shift? Because we were told before Murph switches shift that Tuna Melt Man had not been coming in and he was worried about it. So I'm confused. I don't know. I That's, just I, It just bothered me because I wanted to know more about Tuna Melt Man. I wanted to see that play out. Well, I mean, it's just, it's, there's no rhyme or reason to being straight or gay, so it doesn't matter. Like, it's just, people are people. Well, right. Like, no, like, to me, no, he didn't need to be gay, but he also didn't need to not be gay. So, yeah. I'm fine yeah. with all of it. Yeah. And he also, they were saying he was a token black and he didn't need to be black. He didn't need to be black, but he also didn't need to not be black. So. People are people. Like, what, what does it matter? They're. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I don't. I didn't understand the criticism, but it was there. So, anyway, did movie. you want to talk about classism since you brought it up? I mean, yeah, this movie was considerably more classist and defined by that s- structure in our society than I expected. Yes. So before you say much, I do want to kind of give a level set that we are from New England. So we do have judgy feelings about Connecticut, not in a mean, hateful way. But anybody who says, like, I'm from Connecticut, the first thought is, oh, okay, you're rich. Because Connecticut predominantly has a significant amount more money than a lot of the other New England states. And that's fine. It's the highest per capita income per household in the country. Right. So when we went into the movie, that, to me anyways, the minute I heard it was in Connecticut, I was like, oh, okay, it's going to be it's gonna be that type of movie with the, the rich kids, which it was. So I yeah. guess good for you for picking that state. But w- there is classism in this, and it's a good state to show it, because it is for sure one of those states where there is very rich spots in Connecticut, and there's also not so very rich spots in Connecticut. And as you get closer to the other parts of New England, then we come into other types of not rich. Well, it's, it's Massachusetts has that same problem where there's very, very affluent communities. Of course there are. Uh, it's just, it's not really something that you see in a lot of movies for the most part. At least not lately. I'm sure there's plenty of movies that show it. I mean, especially not a movie that's supposed to be just a lighthearted movie. It's just, it's... Right, so do you want to talk about what they did there? Well, they just... He is so enthralled with the the brand new BMW, the beautiful house, all of the lavish parties and... The gorgeous girl that really seemed to only be gorgeous to him because she was rich because the girl he had in front of him was also rich and also gorgeous and he seemed to not see her, which was very odd right. to me. But... I just, it's... You get so caught up in that, I guess. It just... It seems very counterintuitive just to, to a lighthearted movie where it's like oh we're rich you're not and he took it personally like oh yeah absolutely to he, the point of when people weren't even thinking it he's already on the defensive yeah and now i was a little bit confused by the type of i'm putting in quotations poor he was because he wasn't poor spoiler alert he wasn't poor like his his house was beautiful. There was nothing wrong with his house. I mean, maybe it wasn't a mansion, but I didn't see that Celia lived in a mansion either. The only thing I could see was that her, maybe her ceilings were higher. I don't know. But she had a nicer car in high school, which, spoiler, if you have a car in high school, you're not. Right. You're not doing too bad. 
below the poverty line. Yeah, so it was it was weird. It was one of those like this seems like first world problems type thing. It it is that because he's definitely not going hungry. He's not looking for his next meal and having to walk down the streets worrying that he's going to get jumped or be attacked by a gang. Like it's not that kind of poverty. Right. And I mean, I think at the beginning of the movie his guidance counselor gave him some real you know, food for thought. And she, he said, I want to change the world. And she said, okay, how? And he said, you know, I, I want to, I want to change the game. What game? I want to do more for the world. How? Like she kept asking him, okay, like, what do you mean by that? What are you trying to do? What are you digging into? And he had no answers for any of it. So it was like, they were just empty, like almost platitudes. It yeah. Was it was almost those day. things you see written on the wall. Like, you know, never give up, never give up on what? With, Hanging. What's your, Hang in there with the cat on the wall. Right. So it seemed like his sole purpose was to make money. There was no... He had no grander plan. And that was a huge theme in this movie. This whole movie is just... It's freaking flat. It's just... it's There's no depth to it. Right? Like, there's no... It's a chick flick. Okay. I mean, we're stretching here. Talking about classism in a chick flick. And that's... <laughs> Anyways... Okay, so let's talk about things that are less deep because you say we're stretching. So likability of the characters. So we said that the girl was likable. Yes, I I will agree with that. So what about Brooks? Did we find him likable? Not really. Well, you you were pretty... Not not at all. Full stop, across the board, not at all. Didn't like him. No, I I mean, I didn't have any significant feelings either way. It's just kind of like, you're there. See, so I thought there were pockets where he was likable. Like, for example, he goes on a date with a girl, and she wants help um, learning how to date. And she is telling him how nervous she is and how stupid she thinks it is and how she should never date. And he was, like, reinforcing her and saying, no, you you should date. And, like, he was helping her, and he was being, like, a genuine person. And there were moments throughout the movie where he did things like that where you were like, oh, he's a good dude. Or even his friendship with Celia – there were times where he was affirming her and helping her and making her feel like a better person and, like, helping her with, like, her own relationship situation that she had going on with that weird artist boy. And he was very supportive, helpful, selfless. Like, but yeah, then... Yeah, but then he also is self-serving in terms of wanting to hook up with the rich girl. You mean that he's a blind guy who only thinks about himself? Basically. Hmm. So new and different for high school teenage men. Yeah, but it's it just, it's, I don't know, there's no real, other than those few scenes in the movie, there's no good or bad, really. No, but I will say that looking at this movie, I would have to see more from him, but I think growing up, I do think that he has the ability to have depth and things like that if he continues to grow. Like right now in this, he seems like pretty static and one dimensional, but he did seem like he had that ability to kind of grow a little bit. And I'd be interested to see him in roles that are not chick flicky to see like, you know, where his acting really is. Like, is it just he's cute or is there more to him than that? Yeah. So it's hard to say because he's a teenager. So like, I don't know if what the appeal is. Yeah. You're very, very exciting in this. (laughs) So anyways, One of the things that they had talked about in this was how he was so against going to a public college. Like, his dad wanted him to go to UConn, and he got a full ride, and he was basically like, I am not going to a public college. I am going to Yale. And it was just like, I'm sorry, what? All I'm thinking there is going, you're going to spend 60 grand a year for the education that's going to be functionally the same, and... Then you can just get a job and live your life with no debt versus a quarter million dollars in debt. I mean, fair, but then it makes me think about the fact that I was dead set against going to community college. And honestly, I don't know why. I don't know if it was a, I was afraid people would look at me funny. I don't know what it was. I think there is that stigma. I don't know why necessarily because from a dollar perspective that makes all of the sense in the world is to go to a community college get all the gen eds knocked out so you don't have to spend the king's ransom right of college tuition college tuition yeah now i decidedly went to one of the most affordable 
state colleges, I also didn't live at school. Yeah. So for me, it would have been a minuscule difference. It wouldn't have really mattered. And for somebody who doesn't like people, the the whole transferring thing would probably not been worth it. But that was just a lucky financial situation that I ended up in kind of thing. But for you... Well, it's, it's, it's the same. It's, it's His goal is to go to Yale, and he doesn't have anything after that because he doesn't know who he is as a person. Right. Like, there's no... There's no plan in place. There's no reason. And that is true for a lot of high school students where I didn't know what was going to happen after college. I, d- I knew I was going to go to college. I didn't know anything after that. Right. And like there's no... You, you have to spend more time figuring out what's important to you. Like that's that's more important than where you went to school. Well, but the rich girl had a plan. She knew exactly what she was going to do after college and you didn't like that either. Well, yeah, because she was going to get a small personal loan of a million dollars from her father, like some certain... So you didn't like the correlation to somebody you dislike? No, I just also didn't like the fact that she only has that plan in place because of her father. So you're jealous, or...? But she, the only reason that she has that plan is because of her father being a hedge fund manager. Okay. And if she was just a normal person, she wouldn't have that same at same plan like she, it would have been different she'd be like I'm gonna have to work nights I'm gonna have to go to night school I'll figure things well, out right things would be different but it doesn't mean that it's bad that she has what she has there's nothing wrong with that as long as she doesn't you know hurt anybody in the process well yeah but it's this, this sense of entitlement because it's a chick flick it's you're meant to not like her mm. so okay mission then. accomplished well okay I'm glad that you're so easily sweet um, so in that vein, um, he, at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, chooses to go to Yukon over Yale. Now, given that Yale was his dream for the entire movie and presumably his life, was that the right decision to make before he even applied to Yale? I would say no, because he probably would have gotten in. And given how well he, he had a relationship with the dean, he might have full well gotten a full ride to Yale. A relationship that he lied about. It doesn't matter. Like... I will pretend to like bees if it means I get to go to, to Yale for free. But what if the guy was to find out that he never liked bees in the first place? Like, what if he actually asked him for the honey that he was supposed to trade with him? Well, then I'm finding some honey from somewhere <laughs> and saying it's mine. So you're fine with lying to get what you want? Oh, yeah. When it's a big, faceless institution? Yeah, sure. Interesting. Okay, so... Rich people can't have things handed to them, but the rest of us can lie to get what we want because we don't have those. It's all part of the hustle. Okay. Oh, okay. So you're using the douche's line now. Got it. Okay. No, it's his part of the lie. He's saying it's part of the hustle when he when she gets Yeah, that's because that's what the guy said to him when he asked how he got the car. He said it's part of the hustle. Yeah. Um, so I mean for me it was like I was I went back and forth because to me I felt like you don't give up on a big dream like that. Just without even trying, without even seeing if you get there. I mean, if he had both of them in front of him and he was making a decision where he was equally accepted and, you know, they were both sitting on the table, okay, like, fine, make a decision based on what you right. want. But he never even applied and it just kind of felt like, but don't you want to know? Like, don't you want to see if all of your efforts at least got you there, even if you choose not to go? You're gonna, otherwise, you're going to live your life going, well, I might have gotten in. Right, like, and it's always the, I could have gotten into Yale, but I didn't even apply. Like, I don't know. Like, it just felt like... I could have been why? an astronaut, but I didn't go to NASA. Like... Yeah, it's just the whole, I could have gone to law school, but I yeah. never applied. Like, I mean... It's just, it's... It, I don't know. It just, it just kind of falls felt... flat. It's just kind of like, you, you're cheating yourself, and it sucks. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so, finally... Um, the grant money. So the question of the internet on this movie is the grant money that his father received at the end of the movie. He receives a letter and it says that he got the grant money he didn't think he was getting for a book to yeah. write. And the internet is speculating that Brooks actually wrote that letter to his father and gave him all of the money he earned to go to Yale. So... The question then becomes, one, is that really in truth with his whole honesty policy of living, you know, his true life and doing things honestly and all of that? And two, was it the right thing to do with that money or should he have 
still worked towards Yale or still, you know, done something for his future rather than giving it to his father. I mean, it is a nice thing to do. And, it, and it, realistically, that's the only way that his father would accept the money. Like, he's not going to be able to say, hey, dad, here's a check for 50 grand or whatever it is. And True. So it's okay to do it because you know that your father wouldn't accept it any other way? It's it's all right to lie in that circumstance because you're doing it for a good reason. To help someone that you care about. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the only thing that makes me feel a little bit eh about it is like when you're a writer and you think you got a grant, then you feel like you've accomplished something and you he didn't. Like it's a fake accomplishment. I feel like that's Well, his father had already accomplished other things, so Well, right, but still it's like it's like feeling like, Oh, I I've I'm back, like I've got it back and like you know, and then it's not there and it's nice to build somebody up, but at the same time, like It you might know. be just the, the thing that he needs to get back in to being inspired and get back to that. Yeah. I mean, I think giving him the money was absolutely the right choice. I 100% am behind that. I just don't know about the whole lying part of it. So, I don't know. We don't know if that's the case. They don't really explain it. It just kind of is there and they don't really tell you. But, anyways. So, yeah. I mean, that's really the whole movie. I don't... There's not much else going on in this movie. They do make a lot of mentions of his mother and the fact that his mother is married to a rich child plastic, surgeon plastic pediatrician surgeon like yeah it was, it was weird um so you kind of get the idea that maybe his fascination with rich people has to do with the fact that his mom left him for a rich person so he feels like he needs to be rich in order for his mom to accept him because they keep sending um cards showing her new family to them so that was kind I mean, of the vibe i got i mean that's entirely fair and that's more deep than i would have expected from a movie Right, but that was the vibe I got. Um, But other than that, there wasn't much else going on. No, it was just a quick, easy, done movie. It's like a lighthearted, there's nothing. Yeah, but if you need a movie that's not going to make you sad or make you think too much or any of that kind of stuff, because we all need that every once in a while, a break, I mean, it's free on Netflix. So if you have Netflix. Who Who doesn't have Netflix? I don't know, but we got in a little hot water yes, last week when we said something about it being free on Disney Plus, and we were told, well, not everybody has but Disney Plus, and we got a little hot water for that. So, I'm not going to assume who has what. All I'm going to say is if you do have Netflix, it is free on Netflix. So, there is that. I think it's a cute movie to just kind of, you know, just have a break kind of night, you know? Shut off your brain and forget the year that is 2020. Yeah, because, like, who doesn't need to do that right now? Because we all I do want to talk about, he said, what is a Reddit? And how do you not know about Reddit? Well, I am in a fight with Reddit, so let's not let's not get into it because I'm in a fight. Okay, so <laughs> of course you are. He also said no to steak at the end of the movie. Nobody says no to steak. That's that's anti everything I've ever believed in in my entire life. So what you don't believe that meat is murder? You're so cute. Steak's my favorite food. So oh no, it's a hundred percent her her favorite meal of any kind, and she will get it. At every single possible chance. Absolutely. Because steak is everything. So, anyway, I do think you have a history minute. Tyler's History Minute. Uh, I have a few. Wow. Uh, so, he's his whole goal was to get into Yale. Yes, it was. Thank you. Uh, so, I'm going to talk briefly about the history of Yale. Oh, joy. Uh, Founded in 1701. Uh, It was named after Elihu Yale. Elihu. Elihu. L-E-I-H-U. So, Elihu. Is that a man or a woman? Yeah, I'm assuming a male. A man. Uh, It was actually started off as the collegiate school. Okay. And then renamed in 1718. Uh, There was a gentleman by the name of Jeremiah Dummer. That was arguably a more influential founding member of Yale, but the tr- the board of trustees didn't want to name it Dummer College. I mean, fair choice, fair choice. <laughs> it's just it's an unfortunate name if you're going to be donating to a college. Yeah, but so they went with Yale rather. Is than there Dummer. anything named after him anywhere in in the university? I think there are a couple buildings or things I hope so. that. You can just use Jeremiah. You don't need to use Dumber. (laughs) Dumber. JD? I don't... Oh, well, can't use that now, can we? (laughs) 
Uh, then I want to talk about a bit about Banksy because street art is mentioned quite a bit in this. Uh, and they obviously are referencing Banksy. So yes. there is an artist in this movie that they call Trashbug. Yep. And his main um, artwork is gas mask On things. Babies. Old and it's like people. stencil work. It looks exactly like Banksy. It, it, it's. It's referencing Banksy. It, it 100% is. Yes, it is. So, go ahead. And Banksy is a uh, street artist. Is he now? Who he, knew? He, yeah, started out in, I believe it was Bristol, England, uh, in the 1990s. Okay. Uh, a lot of his work is darker than you would expect, and it's stencil rather than freehand. Uh, a lot of it has to do with political commentary and political satire gas masks are used quite a bit uh, just for their stark contrast to everyday life Mm -hmm. and to make a point Uh, the person most likely to be Banksy which is still not confirmed either way is a gentleman by the name of Robin Gunningham Uh, he has a birthday coming up actually Um, and why do we think he's Banksy do we know uh, so the timeline fits with his movements, uh, and he went by an alias, uh, Robin Banks. Ah, okay. Uh, so that's just a clever play on words for Robin, robbing Banks. Yeah. Uh, which you can then turn, turn into Banksy. Gotcha. So the, 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 he's the most likely person. But we still haven't sorted it out. The, no, it's, it has not been definitively proved either way. One day. One day we'll look back on this and we will know who he is. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, well, they mention Dwight D. Eisenhower. They do. Uh, and saying, who are you, Dwight D. Eisenhower, basically? Uh, no. Her quote is, I am not your responsibility because Eisenhower is not in office anymore. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Eisenhower is very much a product of the time that he was president. The 1950s? Yes. Uh, after World War II, where he helped beat the hell out of the Nazis. Uh, not a good time for the LGBTQ community. The, and what the, was it? The, the Lavender Scare, yeah. which is different from the Red Scare. Yeah, not great. So if you yeah. need to know what that is, it's not great. It's persecution of the LGBTQ community in the federal government. Uh, just they, at one point they were... Mass mo- fired, basically? More maligned than communists, which also <sighs> did not get a... Oh, that's why Lavender Scare, Red Scare. Yes. I just put the two together. I'm sorry. Wow. All right. That's on recording. So good. Well. Uh, he also, he believed that women, he had contradicting opinions on women. So it's, he believed women belonged in the home raising children, which is an antiquated notion. But he also believed that they had a very important responsibility to be educated because you need to be educated in order to vote. You also have to be educated if you are the person at home with the kids because it's your responsibility to pass that on right so there's a important covenant there to make sure that the next generation doesn't screw things up right. which we could argue back and forth either way yeah we could so those are what i got for the history minute okay sounds good i mean i would say just the 1950s was not the best time for women um, in the household in general. I mean, 1950s were just not a good time for most people. Well, no, but I'm just saying in that respect. And he didn't, he never really had a stance either way. He yeah. didn't really do anything for or against. And if you're wondering, Roe v. Wade was far after him, so he did not yeah. help in that aspect at all. But the 19th Amendment was already passed. In the 20s, yes. So, so it's, it's a, it's a... I don't know why she said what she said. I mean, the 1950s are very well known for the, you know, Donna Reed type housewife. Well, so she the, may have been referring to the that. The June Cleaver vacuuming, doing all the chores in the house with the pearls on, having a drink ready when your husband gets home. That like, that was... Right. That was what it was, what the climate was. But yeah. it, it's odd that she mentioned a pretty progressive president of all presidents. I mean, he did have a woman in his cabinet, which to my knowledge would have been pretty... Radical. Radical for that time period. Right. So we don't know. We don't know exactly why she mentioned him in that vein. It was a time... It, she could have said the 1950s, which would have made more sense. Well, she said it because 
Eisenhower's not in office. That's 1950s. Well, right, but using his name when he is actually kind of a progressive was a little weird, but who knows? He yeah, that's didn't what seem I got. to have a thing in it either way. So, okay, so audience asks... Audience asks... You guys again didn't do so great Always. For us, which Let is fine because I mean last week they did so you know back and forth but um there was something um so Stork you know he generally throws us a bone when we have nothing um he clearly didn't see the movie but he said describe each of your ideas of a perfect date keep this happiness to a minimum and that was directed at you go um my idea of a perfect date yeah um I mean Currently, I'm I'm stuck on this whole wanting to go to Broadway thing, and which is what I said to you when we first met, I believe, is that my big thing would be to be able to go to New York and, you know, go see, like, a Broadway show and, like, have the whole, like, fancy dinner and getting dressed up and all of that. And I remember back then you said that you're definitely going to do that. And then when I asked to go to a Broadway show, you didn't take me. So... You're going to throw that. I, I took you to Los Angeles instead. Yeah, but I mean, I think I did mention that to you when we first started dating. Oh. So, I'm just saying, so right now that's where I'm at. Now, my perfect date does change depending on like what I'm like into at that moment. And right now we <clears throat> obviously just watched Hamilton since that was our last thing. And I'm kind of back into my whole I miss musicals thing. So I mean, I totally would be happy with going to a museum. I mean... I'll even get you a crushed velvet blazer. <laughs> I, I think mine is going to be very similar because I do really like the idea of getting dressed up and going to a nice restaurant and having a nice sit-down meal and a conversation and maybe seeing a show or going to a night out in the town. Exactly. Yeah. Just doing something that you know, we don't... Not COVID time, obviously. Yeah. Doing something that we don't normally do. Like go to a restaurant and then go to a, a, a Boston place to do something I don't, that we haven't done like find something something new and different new and different yeah, yeah. Like whether it's a paint night or just something random just i'm good at that i'm good at yeah. random things i do that a lot when covid's not around exactly we're kind of screwed at the moment yeah so basically our perfect date is not being stuck inside for quarantine yeah yeah i mean <laughs> okay although she didn't go to the bookstore which is the Better of the would, two. Would, yeah. Over the high school dance, totally go to the bookstore. Yeah. I, I, I would live in the bookstore. I, yeah, I still would if I could, but we go to bookstore dates all the time when yeah. COVID's not around. We do. Um. Anyway, okay, so the only other thing was confusing, and I'm not going to use names because I don't want to, you know, out anybody, but, um, I mean, they put it on a public thing, so, I mean, I can talk about it. Um. So the other, other thing that was put under our audience ask was, never seen it. That, and I have yet to go on a date with a man. I want to find someone to marry. So I'm, I have some questions, and I want That's to That's a just... little bit cart before the horse. You got to go on a date to then find somebody. Yes. So, I mean, in our case, we did meet and get to know each other before ever going on a date, because we were friends well, for yes, years. Well, yes, but we had been on dates with other people. It's not like you're going I mean, it's out... not like I'm proud of that. Like, it's not like I but wish that that it's... came with me. But it's not like I've never been on a date with anyone ever. I need to find someone to marry. Oh, you need to tell people you've been on oh, dates. Yeah. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it's go out and meet people. And that that's the first step. And then. Yeah. Now, I have to assume that the person who said this is young. And that comes with the young territory of thinking that you need, you just want to get married. You just want to just jump right in. Because I know, I will admit, I was engaged in high school. So I It's really, a rush to grow up. Yeah, it was the whole, like, I just want to be an adult. I want to be married. I want to have all those adult responsibilities and that whole thing. And yeah. it's just, yikes. Like, Slow your roll. Yeah, marriage is no different than dating, I promise you. There's literally nothing different. The only difference is, like, we pay taxes together. Like, I can't even... There's really nothing else different. Like... Yeah, no, it's basically the same. Yeah. So, like, everybody who says, like, life changes dramatically when you get married, I don't, I don't know what you've been doing. Like, what did you do before that made it different? I I'm confused. So. Uh, I mean, at some point, if we had kids, I'm, I'm imagining that would significantly change things because then. 
Well, but that's different. Yeah, that's different. Some people have kids before they get married, so fair. the marriage is not the changing factor. That is entirely fair. Yeah. So, relax, enjoy dating. I promise you, you're not missing anything. All right. So much for this being a short podcast. We're at fifty minutes. Oh yeah, well. Good. Ratings and reviews. Yes, go for it. Reviews. So Rotten Tomatoes has it at sixty-five. Okay. Critic score. Uh, the audience score is thirty-seven. Well, you know what? Y'all people just keep expecting this huge production it just, for what? It's, it's a chick flick. Get over yourselves. I mean, I'm probably closer to the audience score. I mean, whatever I gave Big Trouble, like... You thought it was that bad because you said right great. after that you didn't mind it. It's, so not, it's not bad or good. You I'm, just want people to five, like you. Five out of ten? Just exactly mediocre, middle? I mean, fine. Fine. I don't know. Just, just, there's nothing good or bad about it. It's just, it's a movie. It's, yeah. No, there isn't. It's a chick flick. Okay? It, it's a chick There's flick. nothing there for me to critique or... Or give a rating either way. Like it's, and yet, here we are with a 15-minute podcast. Yeah. So, That's your fault. That's um, on you. Anyway, I was going to give it a six and a half. Um, it's a cute chick flick. It's a little bit young for my obvious taste because clearly I'm not a teenager. Um, so not the themes are not things that I would necessarily relate to too much. Um, but I thought it was cute. It made me happy. And, the, you know, it, it served its job of filling a, a night. And I didn't see anything wrong with it. There was nothing mm-hmm. egregiously annoying or anything about it. So... You know, it was yeah. cute. A good way to pass the night. So, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. So, we're moving on to my choice? Yes. Happy, happy movies. So, we are continuing a theme of lighthearted, happy movies. I chose Big with Tom Hanks. Because who doesn't want to watch every Tom Hanks movie ever? Yeah, I mean, I would literally watch every single Tom Hanks movie that has ever been made. Yes. Yeah, so, I'm this okay. is a movie I'm okay with that. Neither one of us have seen. Nope. But I believe our audience has to have seen it. So One would imagine, because it was made in, what, the 80s? I think so. So so I'm counting on you guys. If you have audience ask, please send them our way. Please, I'm begging you. We need at least two. For the love of God, how hard can that possibly be? <laughs> so that's all we need. So anyway, I guess that's it. So if you guys want to talk to us outside the podcast, I am on Twitter at CinematicallyC, and Tyler is on Twitter, blame Tyler CC. Always tag me if you want to talk to him. I do my best to make sure he always sees yeah, everything. Not on social media, ever, for any reason. Yeah. Um, if you want to find us on other things, we have an email, cinematicallycorrect at gmail.com. We have all different forms of social media. If you look up CinematicallyC, you will find us. Uh, Twitter is your best bet, though. Um, but yeah, that is it. So thank you to Jake at Atlas Music for our intro and outro music, and we'll be back next week with Big. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>